Thank you, Kim, Jerry. Father Reggie and all of you for coming together. It's very special that all the faiths are here in support of the community and Israel. Before I start, I want to take a moment um, and ask you all for a moment of silence for all those that are injured and that have been murdered over the last week. Hello, neighbors and friends. My name is Don Kishin, Tal Kishin. I'm an Israeli American, a Wilton resident, a husband, a father of four sons, two of them here with me tonight, and a proud Sabo. My wife Jennifer, unfortunately, couldn't be here tonight. She's with our third son, Josh, at Yale New Haven Hospital. He's okay. He's going to be back home tomorrow. I know how much it means to the people of Israel who have endured so much over the last week that we are all here together in solidarity with Israel. It's easy to feel paralyzed by tragedy. However, we are all here together as a community, comforting one another, praying, and supporting Israel. On October 7th, 2023, Israel's 9-11, Hamas massacred more than 1,300 people including infants, children, women, men, and the elderly. These terrorists opened fire on young festival goers indiscriminately and are still holding 150 hostages from Israel, the United States, and many other peace-loving nations today. In the face of absolute evil that confronts us, Israel is and always will be a beacon of strength, power, and hope. And as we gather here today, it's important to know that at this moment, at this very minute, there is a social post of hate, and anti-Semitism that is about to go live. And on maybe a, a campus nearby, a protest, anti-Israel, anti-Semitism on a college campus. Our strong stand against hate and anti-Semitism and terrorism is crucial. There is no justification to terrorism. You either stand with Israel or you stand with terrorism. We can take action. We can make a meaningful difference. Together, we can support one another and support the IDF and their reservists, whose soldiers are brothers and sisters mothers and fathers, husbands and wives. Israel's army is as strong as its people. The idea army is the people, and the people of Israel will do everything possible to defend the country, a safe haven and a home to every Jew worldwide, including sacrificing their lives. Just like my Uncle David, who 50 years ago from tomorrow, from tomorrow, was killed in the Yom Kippur War, which until the atrocities of this week 
was the bloodiest period in Israel's history. My uncle David, nicknamed Dudi, and for the Israelis in the room know, the definition is friend, was a brave, physical, and spiritual soldier. He was anti-war, a bookworm, a man of peace, and he supported a two-state solution. And yet, when called to defend his country, he paid the ultimate sacrifice. Dudi was a tank commander in the 257th Battalion. He once told his brother, my father, who is here tonight, if I serve, it will be meaningful. He was killed October 16, 1973, on my first birthday. He was 22, battling the Egyptians in the Sinai, protecting Israel in the Yom Kippur War. He died leaving behind a wife, murdered, killed, only a few weeks after their wedding. Uncle Dudi is one of my heroes. He inspired me to volunteer at 19 and to the paratroopers in the IDF. And today, my beloved uncle has four nephews and one niece serving in the front lines. Now, I want to give you an opportunity to take action. My boys have heard me, have been known to say lots of quotes. And my old time favorite is, if it's meant to be, it's up to me. Before I invite my friend Debbie to share her story, I want to mention that I'm very fortunate to work for an amazing organization and for an amazing man who's taken action. I told him that we want to raise money for the Friends of the IDF tonight. And he's volunteered to match up to $5,000 of what we raise tonight. Thank you, Larry. With that, I want to invite Debbie to Dalva. Thank you. I'm Debbie.